This is how I grade using Google Drive workflow. So when students submit a paper to me on Google Docs, I ask that they put their name in the title of the document so that when I'm ready to grade their paper, I can just search by their name. So I'm ready to grade Miranda's paper, and I search, and I know that we're on dystopian lit essay number two. So the first thing I look at, like with any paper, is general formatting requirements. Does she have the MLA header, you know, title? Um, you can look at the spacing and so forth. And then I start reading the introduction, um, skim through, make sure that there are other formatting things that are correct, but also that she's leading up to her main ideas in the thesis. I usually always comment on the thesis itself. I just think it's good practice to really pay attention to the core of their argument. Uh, it might be something simple like interesting thesis, or I might ask them to reword it, but in some way, shape, or form, giving credence to the core ideas of their paper. Then I'll go back into the introduction. I might look at craft. You know, in this case, I was talking about the passive voice. But I might also look at the way they're introducing characters of the novel and make some sort of comment on it. And then what I do is, like you would with a hard copy in front of you, is I go through and I make comments all the way through the paper. Um, I look for topic sentences in the way that they're hooking a reader, the composition of the, the composition and overall organization of the paragraph itself, how are they analyzing just post quotation, and how are they pulling things together in the paragraph. I might look at sentence structure and think about um, the way that they're using word choice. What I tend to do, and you'll see me do this a couple times here, is um, if they have minor errors or repetitive uh, technical errors, I put them in orange. It's not worth my time to go through and mark every single one of them. If I find that there is a section of a paragraph that has multiple errors, I'll actually highlight it, and in my comment I'll say, you have three or four errors here, can you reword it and fix them? Um, this isn't that, not that fine, that fine tooth comb, sort of nitpicky editing. I'm really thinking about the way that I'm framing my comments and questions on the side because I know my students are going to be responding to them. And I think that's the most important part. Before where I write like awkward or word choice, now I'm asking deeper questions that I know that they're going to answer. So what I do then in order to grade is I go into my blank master rubric and I put in Miranda's name. What I do here is I actually put a period and you'll see that it changes the color, it changes the text color, and it also grades over on the right. I have another video that actually explains how to do this, which you can look at. But what you can see is that she pretty much all the way down is meeting the standard. Um, I want to check on her length requirement, so I'll refer back to her paper and make sure it was a three-page paper. So I skim through, it looks like I hit the three pages, and then I'll go in and grade that um, We'll go ahead and put a period there that it meets the length requirement and it comes out to about an 85 which is a pretty average good paper so at this point i want to make sure that i give an overall piece of feedback you know looking at her overall understanding i always start with a positive comment and then say okay here's something that you can work on for your next paper and i also think about um what other papers she's had in the past this was definitely an improvement for her I then refer to my hard copy packet. She submitted you know, a letter, her rough draft, or edits, the outline, the thesis development, all in a hard copy to me. And so I flip through that and make sure I can give her the process grade. What she had said was that her rough draft was on Google Docs, so I can go into file, see revision history, and actually can look through what she's done in each version of the paper that she's edited. What's really nice about this is that it does give credence to the kids who like to edit as they write. And I'm able to say, okay, look at you have spent a lot of intellectual time fixing this paper up and making it better. And for the students who haven't, it's a way for me to hold them accountable for the work they've put into it. At this point, what I do is I actually erase the numbers off of the rubric because I, I'm less about them seeing the number right away and more thinking about the rubric as formative, though it's a summative moment, as formative feedback in the long term. So I print that out and I'm going to attach that to the hard packet um, that she has given me. And then I'm also going to give her a digital version of it. So I'm going to copy to a rubric, a spreadsheet, sorry, copy to a spreadsheet that she shared with me at the beginning of the year. So she's labeled that spreadsheet with her name and everything so I can easily find it. So her student view, if she were to look at a rubric right now, she would actually see right on top, if you will, the rubric that I just shared with her. That'll be the first tab that shows up. But what she can also do is go through and look at the tabs of the other rubrics that she's had throughout the course of the year. So she can look back at her first paper and so forth. And if you think about this, if you as a teacher are setting this over and over over the course of the year, she can now use it as a metacognitive space to say, oh, look it, I've always been really strong in my organization, but look how I've improved in my idea development, and look how I've always done well in my process grade. So with Miranda's um, rubric all shared with her, she is set to go, and I am ready to move on to grade the next student. What I do is I go through and I erase my comment to her. Um, I put back the numbers over along the side. And then what I'm ready to do is put her into the graded pile and grade the next student.